In recent years, China's development of megaprojects has been nothing but impressive. With high-speed railways, building one of the largest hotels, and building the biggest bridges, China has been breaking records. For example, by building the world's largest dam, which is the Three Gorges Dam. However, things are about to change, since the country's working on building a dam that can produce at least three times the energy of the Three Gorges, which is also going to be the future of hydro energy in the Tibet Autonomous Region. This dam would be the first of its kind, and will cost a staggering 75 billion sterling. But at the same time, it seems like no one really wants this mega project to be built. And even though governments are involved, and there's a lot of money to be made, the backlash it's receiving is a moment of concern for the developers. Join us as we discover the world's largest super dam that no one wants to be built. The Yarlong Tsangpo River, also known as the Ramaputra River once it crosses India and Bangladesh, is a river of the utmost significance. It's one of the largest Asian rivers, running along 1,125 kilometers or around 699 miles. This river comes from the Yangtze Glacier in the Tibet Plateau before actually plunging deep into a gorge near the India-China border. Moreover, this place is also known as the Great Bend and is considered ideal for its hydropower generation thanks to its huge water flow. China is always looking for the best opportunities to develop and grow, and now they want to build one of the biggest mega projects in the area. The same happened with the Three Gorges Dam, which now controls the flow of the Yangtze River. Right now, China is the undisputed leader in dam building. Not only do they have the largest working dams of any other country in the world, but they also hold the world record for the largest dams with the highest hydroelectric power capacity. But now, China is in the process of creating the world's first super dam, which is set to beat all the previous records we've ever seen. The Yarlong Tsangpo is a transboundary river, meaning any developments on the Chinese side could have direct consequences downstream in India and Bangladesh. This complicates the dam project, turning it from a national infrastructure initiative into a regional and global issue. But despite that, China is actively working and is constructing the proposed super dam. For reference, the current Three Gorges Dam is three times bigger than America's largest dam and produces water for over 4 million people, including many cities upstream and downstream, such as Shanghai. China's so-called Super Dam was announced back in 2021 when the National People's Congress approved the country's 14th five-year plan. According to the plan, China will construct many new projects under the Belt and Road Project, and the Yarlung Tsangpo River Super Dam was also approved. This dam will sit in the lower reaches of the Yarlung River, known as the Brahmaputra River in India. This area is in the foothills of the Himalayas, in the Tibet Autonomous Region. The river goes along the Yarlung Tsangpo Grand Canyon, which is one of the deepest canyons in the world, stretching to around 504 kilometers in length. This canyon is just a tiny bit longer than the Grand Canyon in the US. The rivers and the cliffs are perfect for creating infinite energy and, in theory, this dam could go above and beyond to create three times more energy than the current world's largest dam. Reports suggest that this new dam could generate as much as 60 gigawatts of power, more than three times the capacity of the Three Gorges Dam, which currently holds the title of the world's largest hydropower project. Hydropower, which produces electricity by harnessing the energy of flowing water, is seen as a cleaner alternative to coal and natural gas, making it central to China's renewable energy strategy. In their own words, China will implement hydropower exploitation downstream of the Yaolong Tsangpo River, and this was clearly mentioned in the proposals in the formation of the country's 14th five-year plan of 2021 to 2025. According to the same report, the Yarlung Tsangpo River has the richest water resources in southwest China's Tibet region. With the potential of an 80 million kilowatt-hour system, the region can potentially become a powerhouse with the construction of the superdam. And if we go further beyond, in the 50 kilometers section of the Yarlung Tsangpo Grand Canyon, the developers could build 70 million kilowatt-hours of potential energy that can become a reality with a 2,000 meter drop, which in total equates to three times more energy than China's current largest dam. Tibet itself has around 200 million kilowatt hours of water resources, which makes up around 30% of the total in China. This project is becoming a reality due to the vision of one man and his party, Yan Jiang, chairman of the Power Construction Corp of China. Yan has been giving everyone updates over the WeChat account of the Central Committee of the Communist Youth League of China, and according to him, the hydropower exploitation of the Yarlong Tsangpo River is more than just a super dam project. It's also useful for the environment, national security, living standards, and will create better relationships with neighboring countries. 
But then again, if they're spending 75 billion sterling, what about this project is so great that it could sustain itself? Moving back to Jan's statement, he said that this station could bring them an income of around 20 billion yuan or $3 billion annually for the Tibet Autonomous Region. On October 16th, Power China signed a strategic cooperation agreement with a 14th five-year plan, and the meeting went well. China has been increasingly improving its technology, becoming a nation that is more than just about producing things fast. It's now doing it properly as well. With other mega dams like the Three Gorges, China has already garnered a lot of experience in creative mega projects, and the Arlong Sangpo River Super Dam is a challenge in itself, since it has a lot of areas to cover. The location of this river itself is quite controversial, since it's situated in a remote area of the Tibetan Plateau. This area is not only dangerous for construction, but it's also known for its harsh climate. Then we have the Great Bend, where the new Super Dam will most likely be built. Construction has already started, but there are other issues, such as the controversies that are now slowly taking over China's new super dam. Large dams are often criticized for their environmental impact, and the Arlong Tsangpo super dam is no exception. The region surrounding the river is home to diverse ecosystems, and disrupting the natural flow of the river could have significant consequences for local wildlife, particularly aquatic species. In addition, the reservoir created by the dam would flood vast areas, potentially displacing not only animals, but also local communities that rely on the river for sustenance. The alteration of the river flow would not only affect the residents living across the area, but also the natural course of things. For example, with the Three Gorges Dam's construction, the wildlife ecosystem was disturbed and many sea animals like the Chinese dolphins are now endangered. Moreover, since the river goes through India and Bangladesh, many people are worried that the dam might affect the flow of water to them, and in turn, cause drought and affect food supply. The Tibetan Plateau, often called the Roof of the World, holds significant cultural and religious importance. The construction of the super dam would likely necessitate the displacement of local communities, many of whom have lived in the region for centuries. For the predominantly Tibetan population, this could be seen as yet another encroachment on their cultural heritage by the Chinese government, potentially fueling tensions between the local population and the authorities. Furthermore, large infrastructure projects have been associated with human rights abuses in the past, particularly in regions like Tibet, where political control is tightly maintained. The forced relocation of communities, lack of compensation, and limited say in decision-making are all concerns raised by human rights organizations. This is especially true for large-scale projects like Neom in Saudi Arabia and even the Three Gorges Dam. These kinds of rumors are already developing with the Yarlong Tsangpo River Super Dam project, and since there are more countries involved, the dispute could become even more heated than it already is. Many political analysts have already noted that this super dam could potentially cause a lot of concern for both India and Bangladesh. India's river system is heavily dependent on the rivers downstream. And now the country is worried that if, in the moments of conflict, the dam's water is held, the whole Indian nation would suffer. And if the water supply is held to ransom, it would only deepen the conflicts between the two regions. Right now, India is also planning to build its own 10-gigawatt project on another side of the Brahmaputra River, just to counter the new super dam that China is building. From here, we must understand that not only people are involved in the construction of these mega-projects, but also multiple governments. Other Indian critics have pointed out China's attempt to have a veil of secrecy surrounding the dam's construction. Without transparency and details, analysts are now worried about the full effects of this dam, which are unknown to this date. India has expressed concerns that the dam could give China the ability to control the flow of water downstream, potentially leading to water shortages during dry seasons or floods during monsoons. Given the already tense relationship between India and China, exacerbated by border disputes in the Himalayan region, the construction of the dam could further strain ties between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. But there are more than just geopolitical tensions, as building a dam like the Yarlong Tsangpo River Super Dam is no easy feat. Building a dam in the remote and rugged terrain of the Tibetan Plateau presents significant technical challenges. The region is prone to earthquakes, and the engineering required to construct a dam that can withstand seismic activity of this magnitude is immense. Moreover, the logistics of transporting materials and equipment to such a remote location would require substantial investment in infrastructure, further complicating the project. But what about China? What are some of the plans they have in mind for the construction of this mega-project? By controlling the flow of one of Asia's most important rivers, China could gain significant leverage over downstream nations like India and Bangladesh. 
Moreover, the dam could be seen as a way for China to further integrate Tibet into its national economy, solidifying its control over the region. Tibet's strategic location, abundant natural resources, and potential for renewable energy make it a valuable asset for China. And the Super Dam is just one part of the country's larger plans for the region. With all the controversies surrounding the project, China has been denying, as always, that it doesn't want bad for anyone. Moreover, the country is emphasizing that the project is primarily aimed at generating renewable energy and contributing to global efforts to combat climate change. Chinese officials have also stated that they are committed to sharing hydrological data with downstream countries to ensure that any impact on water flow is minimized. However, even with these reassurances, it's harder for governments to collaborate due to past political tensions. In India, they're worried about China's water control and giving it control of one of the largest rivers in the world. But for China, this is the perfect opportunity to create so much energy that it would last a lifetime. What do you think about the new super dam being built by China and all its controversies? Does it have a bright future? Or will it cause further problems for the countries in the region and their people? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to support our channel.